Good morning, everyone. My name is Pete Lee. I'm on the leadership team here at Epiphany Station. Epiphany Station is a church that's called to minister to people, and it takes sacrifice to do that. I'd like to uh, explain, describe to you uh, sort of uh, how we uh, pursue that on a Sunday morning and throughout the week. So if you call Epiphany your home, then uh, perhaps you can join us in any one of these ways. Uh, we have our prayer team that uh, we have up here uh, flanked on my flank. Uh, every Sunday morning, whoever it is that's up here at the time, we'll call the prayer team up to pray with any concerns that people may have. We also have the welcome team that uh, welcomes people in, makes them feel at home here at Epiphany. We have our tech team in the back that uh, behind the scenes makes things happen. We have, our, of course, our music team up here that you can readily see and, and uh, you may have a desire to join them. Also during the week, we have uh, various ways of getting involved. We have discipleship training classes uh, in, uh, in terms of wanting to grow in your faith in Jesus. We also have, as Jason mentioned, CR and uh, the care team that's opportunity to connect with people in ways that most people just don't realize. And also our connect groups, our small groups, uh, that's ways in which we can get to know each other in deeper ways. I'm gonna share with you this morning a hobby that I had throughout my life and really up to the present because even the church that we uh, came from, I. Uh, exercise this hobby on a regular basis. But before I talk to you about my hobby, I'm going to share some pictures with you about, uh, well, these are years ago, these pictures. And uh, it's in regard to my family and my dad specifically. There's my dad. Uh, he um, is a young, strapping, collegiate kind of guy there, uh, Mr. GQ, probably right out of college. That's my dad. And the next one, oh, there's my dad as well. He's in the middle of the picture. And there's some uh, family and friends there. I don't know, some of you probably notice on your, on your right, there's a kind of a squirrely looking kid there. You might know who that could be. All right. And, oh, that's the hobby. That gives away the hobby that I've had all my life. That's me on the bicycle and then behind is my family. As I said earlier, uh, all the way up to the, to the present, uh, we had been taking trips with people from our previous church. Every year we'd go to different places in Minnesota and, and much earlier in life, when I was about 14 years old, uh, two of my friends who were also 14 decided we wanted to take a trip to Rochester and actually it was a town south of Rochester and we were traveling from Kokato at the time, which some of you know where that is, but it's an hour west of Minneapolis. So it, when you travel by bike, of course, you can't take the interstate. You've got to take a circuitous route to get there. And so it ended up being over 200 miles. Now, if you're a mom or a dad and you're thinking about this, you're wondering, okay, 14 years old, 200-mile trip, am I going to let my kid do that? And I'm thinking in this day and age, maybe not so much. Things have changed a bit in the last 40 years. Well, fast forward to uh, my trip with my dad. I was just out of high school, and at the time, my dad was the age that I am now, 57. And he decided he wanted to take a bike trip with his son, with me. And I thought, that, that sounds pretty good. So it was a 100-mile trip that we had planned. And we started at 5 in the morning, and we moving along pretty good after about three hours. And... And all of a sudden we hit a bit of a snag because I had to stop really quick. I don't remember why, if a, something was passing, going across the road like an animal or whatever. Anyway, so I slammed my brakes on and my dad was riding really close behind me. He didn't want to run into me, so he took to the ditch. And uh, there he lay in the ditch with a broken collarbone and he wasn't going to go anywhere. So I quickly finished the last two miles into town to the local clinic and got a hold of the nurse there and piled into her car, came out and picked up dad, uh, brought him back to the clinic, got him fixed up, sent him home, and then I proceeded on for the last 70 miles. So the next year, my dad uh, 
He said he wanted to do it again. All right? And I'm hoping that we don't have any mishaps like we did the last time. We started at, uh, again, 5 in the morning, and we arrived safely at our destination. We didn't have any problems. But you think about that. 100 miles. 100 miles on a bicycle, the kind that you pedal, 58 years old. I'm not ready to go bike 100 miles tomorrow. I don't know how it goes for you guys, but uh, the point is, as I aged and as I uh, think back on that experience, I realized the kind of sacrifice that my dad did for me because he wanted to spend some time with his son. He loved his son. And subsequent to that, there's all kinds of times where I've come to realize the, the sacrificial love of a mom, of a dad, and how critical that is in our lives growing up. What did I learn from those road trips? Well, just the fact that the time that he wanted to spend with me was built in relationship and something that he had fostered all his life um, as a lover of God and a lover of people. We're going to look at 1 John chapter 4. That's our core text in our series of the theology of love. And in that letter, 1 John, we read about love. And in fact, the Bible is really a love story, love story of God's love for his people. So 1 John chapter 4 Beginning at verse 7, we read this about God, about love, and about people. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. So the real focus here, the, the, the piece that I want to focus on this morning for all of us is, again, let us continue to love one another. John is here, he's talking to a group of believers, people who have put their faith in Jesus Christ. So right from the get-go, we know that it's, it's a targeted audience and the challenge is for them to love each other as God loves them. Now, this is a sacrificial kind of love that the writer is talking about here, a sacrificial kind of love. And when we put sacrificial love up against any other kind of love that's not sacrificial, it's so obviously different one from the other. It's a far lesser kind of love when it's not sacrificial. Jesus talked about that lesser kind of love in the book of Luke, chapter 6. And it's in a section of the Bible called the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes. Blessed are those. Blessed are those. And so here's what it says in Luke, chapter 6. Again, this is Jesus' words. If you love only those who love you, why should you get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit? Even sinners do that much. Now, I don't believe that Jesus was saying that it's wrong to love somebody that loves you in return. After all, so many of our relationships uh, harmonious, uh, the ability for one to love the other, and it's, it's reciprocal. I mean, that's great. That's wonderful. But I think what Jesus was doing here was he was challenging his listeners, challenging his followers that there's more to love than that. And in fact, he was pointing out the kind of love that marks a follower of Jesus. That kind of love is a sacrificial kind of love. It's not selective love. What Jesus shared in, in Luke was a selective kind of love. I'm going to love you based on you loving me. That kind of love. But Jesus was pointing to something that's not selective, but sacrificial. 
No, we need to remember and we need to know even as we love God, we can forget this. We do not have the capacity to love people sacrificially, to love them well on our own. We don't have that capacity by ourselves. So it's not about trying harder, okay? It's recognizing that we love others best when we draw our strength from God, when we love God, when we recognize that he loves us and he desires us to be in relationship with others. God showed his love for us in a most direct way, the most direct way. This is the only religion of all the major religions that did this where God comes down to earth. He reaches down to us rather than us thinking that we need to reach up to him. He paid the ultimate sacrifice for us because of his great love. We don't deserve it. We can't pay for it. And we can never fully understand his love. It's God that gives us the capacity to love people when we are completely depleted of the ability to do that. When we don't feel like sacrificing for someone else. And again, it's really healthy to come to the conclusion that our ability to love people well comes directly from God. Why do we love people? Because God tells us to love people. It's God's design that we would love people. He created us for relationships. In 1 John chapter 4, it says this, Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. We surely ought to love each other. Have you ever been lavishly loved by someone? Jesus lavishly loves each one of us here today. He proved that with the greatest sacrifice anybody ever could pay when he died for each of us. There isn't anything that you or I can do that will get God to love us more. And there isn't anything that you and I can do that would cause God to love us less. His love is sacrificial. That is a sure thing. But when it comes to us having the ability to love sacrificially, not so much. We find ourselves lacking when it comes to putting all our efforts together to love people sacrificially. Why do we love people? Because God does something in us that causes us to love people, that moves us to love people. Since God loved us that much, we ought to love one another. Now Jesus, he set the bar as high as it could possibly go when it came to love. And if I can trust him to love me lavishly, then I can trust him for me to love others lavishly. Put another way, Jesus said it like this in John chapter 15. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. To lay down one's life is to love sacrificially. It exacts something from us. It takes something away from us. It can be exhausting. It can make the difference in our attitude so that we can go the extra 100 miles. It changes our perspective. It's that lavish kind of love that Jesus has shown us. There's no way we can ever outlove God. We can never outlove God, but we take our cues from Him on how to love people. I have people in my life that I call the 3 a.m. kind of love. 3 a.m. kind of love. At 3 in the morning, if there's something that I'm so bothered by or, or I'm in some kind of crisis, even if it's 3 in the morning, I know I can call these people. And they won't answer the phone simply because it's out of obligation, but it's out of concern for my well-being. Let's talk about that 3 a.m. kind of love. 
How can we administer that kind of love that Jesus administers to us? Again, we're human beings who struggle to love people. We cannot possibly love others like Jesus unless we know Jesus. So that's the first thing, is for us to submit our very will to God when it comes to loving people. Trust him to give you the strength to love others. It's not about trying harder. It's really about resting in what he can do through us. Trust in his love for you that he has already proven to you. And we love others out of that love that's shown to us. And Jesus' love is ongoing. There's no end. It's a lavish kind of love, sacrificial. And it exacted his very life. Could give no higher kind of love. That's the kind of love that God calls us to. One that would require a sacrifice. Because that's how God designed us to be in relationship with each other. So, when I feel another person's insult, it would be helpful to ask myself the question, how would Jesus respond to this? Would he lash back in return? Or when I see a, a lonely person over here somewhere, and, and, and I don't really know him very well, so it's kind of awkward, and it's easier just to kind of walk away, or do I approach that person? When I'm busy, and I really don't have time to stop and help somebody who's in crisis, I'm faced with a decision. What, what, what am I going to do with that? These, these are everyday sort of situations. They're just common to our lives, and oftentimes we didn't, don't really even realize they're happening in front of us. So my challenge, our challenge, speaking to myself here as well, for all of us here this morning, is choose to hear God when it comes to loving people. What's he telling you? How will you respond when opportunities arise, when he brings someone into your life to love sacrificially, to love lavishly? You can't love others well on your own. I can't love others well on my own. But when we trust in Jesus and his lavish love, he'll help us to love others well. Now, some of you may be reflecting on that story about my, my dad and myself and, and thinking, well, that's, that's a very natural kind of love. I mean, it's understandable that, that that would be a dad's love for his son. But what that really taught me early on in life was it gave me a greater appreciation for sacrifice and the amount of love that was given to me as a child from my mother, from my father, and I was a great benefactor of that throughout my life. But also what it did was as I became an adult, I realized more deeply the significance of understanding that there is that lesser kind of love, that selective kind of love. And, and I realized that that wasn't what God called me to. It was something far greater that involved sacrifice. The town that we came from before we ended up here in Thief River Grove City, Minnesota. I had a friend there. His name was Mike. There's Mike. Mike and I became friends probably about a year after we started in Grove City. We were there for 14 years. So about 13 years, I had an ongoing friendship with Mike. Now, it was a bit of a bizarre relationship, really, that Mike and I had. You look at Mike and all tattooed up, kind of a biker type, checkered past. We talked about those things a lot, about his past and his experiences, his hurts, things in his life that, that had value. Mike was a believer in Jesus. And actually, he would talk about that quite often with people. He would just raise the question and have a conversation. And it was so refreshing as a pastor because he taught me a lot. He taught me a lot. And I remember him saying things like this. 
he said, I don't really consider you my pastor. I consider you my friend. That was about as high a compliment as any pastor could probably get. Last fall, Mike passed away quite suddenly. I enjoyed my times with Mike, and I miss him. But now he's with Jesus. Bridging two worlds. Loving without being selective. Being open to whoever it is that God places in my path or I in theirs. Because this is a two-way street after all. How about you? The challenge is for all of us to live out the words of Jesus. To love lavishly, to love sacrificially. To not be selective in our love. With Mike, it began with a simple act of kindness by an anonymous friend who paid him to build us a doghouse for our family dog. And so one day Mike stopped by, knocked on my door, and we had a conversation. And from that conversation, a friendship unfolded. That's really where it is for all of us loving people, it's not like some big grandiose kind of thing. It's, it's rather a simple act of kindness that it starts with. Might be a question that you ask, just a bit of inquisitive about that person. Might be inviting them for a cup of coffee, taking some time to simply listen, to not only hear their words, but to hear their heart. And pretty soon, you realize that a relationship has been born. My encouragement for all of you this morning is, is to go after it. Take that chance. Wait on God. Hear his voice. What is he telling you on any given day? Is he moving you towards somebody that you might not otherwise move toward? He will give you the strength. He gives the understanding and the compassion to love sacrificially and lavishly. As, as I'm going to pray, the prayer team will come up and they're available for anything that you would like to pray about in regard to maybe relationships that you're struggling with or dealing with or challenges that you have. Or maybe it's your relationship with God. Or it could be any other thing, any other... Um, anything that's going on in your life. We'll be happy to pray with you about that. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for people like Mike in our lives. You remind us that life is all about the relationships that we form. And it's not something that we orchestrate. It's something that you do. Lord, help us to be open. Open to all the different ways that you seek to Build us in the area of loving people. Lord, thank you for the lavish, sacrificial way that you showed unconditional love to us. And every day you do, Lord. You never turn your back on us. There isn't anything that you miss in our lives. So Lord, help us to go forward in that security and that strength of your love when it comes to loving others. Pray these things in your name. Amen.